Chinese garden today. I am finally able to film the video I've been wanting to film for a while now, sharing my most successful method of growing dahlias in my climate, which is zone 5B in the suburbs of Chicago and in a woodland area. So our ground has a lot of clay, it holds a decent amount of water, and the best method that I had this year, which is my first year of growing dahlias, by far was in the pots. So I ordered about 32 tubers. I planted some in our backyard where there's some sun. I planted some in the front yard that borders our driveway that has a lot of shade. And then I planted some in our front little garden bed that does get some sun as well. And I've got mixed results. Some I expected, some I did not. One of them I did not was that my potted dahlias that I planted in a pot are thriving. So let's take a look. Woo, you can see the humidity coming through there on my head. So I wanted to show you some of the differences between my potted dahlias and ones that I put in the ground so you can get an idea of why I feel like this by far worked the best for me. So right here, this beauty, which I believe is a Sylvia dahlia. It's either a Sylvia dahlia or it is a part of the old rose mix that I got from Eden Brothers. That is in a nine inch pot and it's doing fine. So technically when I was planning all these, I was reading that usually you need to use at least a 16 inch diameter pot if you're gonna plant dahlias in a pot because the tubers need room to grow and expand and have a better chance of doing well there, which I think is 100% true. However, I didn't want to go out and buy a bunch of pots, especially since I had planted all of these pretty late. I think I didn't get them in until around June 20th. They were the last ones I planted, which is late. Ideally, late May or early June is a better time to plant. But I've got a bunch of eight and nine inch pots and they're growing in there. They're doing okay. So if you think that you need to try, you know, potted dahlias and you don't want to go out and spend a fortune, Use what you have and see if it works first and then you can assess for the next year. But let's look at some more. This one is Shadow Cat. I'm pretty sure my labeling wasn't spectacular because a lot of the tags fell out when I put them in to the pots. But that I got from Connell's Dahlias. And there's also a part of the red mix. I know that because that label's still in there that I got from Eden's Brothers. So there's two different tubers in there. Again, I'm packing them in. Not necessarily supposed to do that, but look, they're growing. That is a 13 inch pot. Look at the stem. One, two, three, four. Incredible. This is a 16 inch pot here. I have no idea what type this one is, but it is an anemone dahlia. The bee was on here all day today. Coming in hot with probably my second favorite out of everything I planted this year. And this is just one from the red mix from Eden's Brothers. If you've been following me, you know I love a solid red and that's a 13 inch pot. I've gotten tons of blooms off of that. Back here, I am not on my tippy toes. I am just standing. This one is definitely taller than me. This one's about there. Isn't that incredible? And they're potted, let me show you. So these actually were the last three pots that I bought. Believe it or not, 15 bucks from Target. And they actually have the water holder underneath. So technically you're not supposed to water them as much if you don't need to. And I really didn't want that kind because dahlias are sensitive to too much water or too little and I didn't want them to get too much. But obviously that's not really been a problem, especially with these two. This one is smaller. But look at those. And these I planted last, probably after June 20th. This one here is the one that I believe is Sylvia. And she is a stunner. I don't even like orange, but she's gorgeous. Pleasantly surprised with this one. And I got that from Suzuki, Suzuki Seeds. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. This is going to be the first bloom on this one. You can see I've got two more coming here. Is going to be bodacious, which is a very loud red and yellow one. So I'm excited to see 
that bloom shortly. It does read a little more orange and yellow than red and yellow in bloom. Okay, so you're probably thinking, great, those look pretty good, but what did you do? How did you get them that way? So this is what I used in these planters. I did the tuber and then I put some Biostone tar starter fertilizer in there. Bone meal, which I got from Swan Island Dahlia Company. The idea I got from them it comes, first of all, their tubers come with a pamphlet that is super informative. And this is one of the things they really recommended putting in there. And I have noticed a huge difference. There were some holes I did not use with this in the ground. And this is a game changer for sure. And then a little bit of compost. I didn't even put peat moss in these planters that I remember. I did do some in the ground because it's heavier clay, but otherwise in the planters, just potting soil. And also important note, potting soil without the built-in fertilizer. So in that Swan Island Dahlia Company pamphlet, it specifically says we recommend not using miracle Grow. Um, potting mix with the fertilizer or any other type of potting mix that has fertilizer built in because the dahlias don't want that. They want to be fertilized differently. So regular potting soil, which is kind of nice because I mean, I use pretty cheap potting soil and I'm getting these results. And then covered it back up, put some sluggo on top after planting to avoid the slugs because we do get slugs and snails eating those tubers. And I waited for them to come up and grow. I watered if I needed to water, especially in the planters because it does dry out more quickly. So I did water every day or every other day, but I'll be honest, there were some days I did not water. Um, and you know how life is, you just skip a few days here or a few days there. And really they are doing great. So I was happy to know that, hey, if life happens and you don't quite get to your watering schedule, still working over here. As far as fertilizing, the one thing I did do was used, in this instance, tiger bloom, but really the pamphlet recommended using any type of bloom fertilizer that has the first number being half as much as the second and the third. So anything, similar to that, 284, anything where the second number and the third number are higher, at least by double than the first number is helpful for fertilizer. And I did do this once a month, only once a month. That's all I had to do. According to that pamphlet, came in with the water with fertilizer in it, made sure they were watered and blooming beautifully. So to give you reference, I wanna show you some that I just planted in the ground. Here's the difference. So they're not terrible, but this is where the bone meal comes in. I did not use bone meal in this hole or this hole. And the bunnies were a disaster to try and keep out of here. That's why the chicken wire is up. But you can just see they're not as healthy looking. That has some deformities. It's not supposed to look like that, but you know, that's an indicator that the plant isn't super healthy. This one's better over here, but still not as healthy looking as the ones that I'm seeing in the pots. These are on their way out. This is checkers. And I do have to say, I loved these as well. I'll try and find a picture of these in their prime. <laughs> I'm leaving them on to go to seed because I do want to collect the seed. But there were a few different variations in coloring. I'm not experienced to know enough if that's normal or if that could be because how these were planted in the ground here. And maybe it could be because I turned this up and plowed this up from just being grass. So, um, you know, nothing was really worked in. So it was an experiment in that soil, but clearly you can see the difference. Hi, Disa. This is the last section where I have potted dahlias. And these tartan dahlias have been stunners. Gorgeous, they're the biggest ones that I have. And also from a pot. 
Okay, let's try and take the porta potties out of the background, huh? We're still getting work done on our house, that's why it's there. But this is much prettier. This is called Tipsy and Picasso, which I really like more than I thought I would. It's got that striping of red with a very delicate purple as well, and mainly white with that electric yellow center. It's pretty unique. Next area I'm gonna show you is the one area that the dahlias I planted in the ground really thrived and are huge, which is right in front of our house here. Let's take a look. This one right here is my tallest one out of all of them that I have, trying to get the whole thing in the frame there. That is called Flip Flop, and I'm 5'4", and that top bloom or bud is taller than me. Here's an up close look at it, and then it opens to that. And this right here, I think is my favorite. From what I can gather, this is either Fire Magic or out of the red mix, but look at that striping. Have you ever? You know I love a red, and with that unique striping in there, mmm. Very here for this. And the last one over here is Wild Cat. Again, it's been raining, so these have gotten a lot of water weight. They still look pretty. You can see it's a little wild up here. They're really tall, but this is by far the best place that my dahlias grew in the ground. So I've got to figure out a way to make that look maybe a little more tame from being the front and center of our house. But I think that could be really gorgeous if I can figure out how to do it strategically. We will end with a little close up of these stunners I cut today. I'm hooked, I'm hooked. Okay, so that's it for this video, everyone. I hope it was helpful just for you to see what worked for my first dahlia growing season in my climate and specific specifications here of our ground being full of clay and fairly wet and unexpectedly planting dahlias and planters, even if they're not 16 inches, I had great results with. So I'm excited about that. I will for sure do that next year in addition to planting in the front garden bed that gets the most sun where I had great results there too. Again, if you're not sure if you can pull it off in your area or if you can grow them, just try. Cause no matter what, you're gonna learn if it works here, or it doesn't work here, or maybe I should try this. Or when I use this product, such as the bone meal for me, I saw different results as opposed to omitting it. Everything you're learning from. So give it a try. It's super fun. It is a lot of work, but gosh, the results pay off, as you can see. So take care, give us a like and subscribe if you're still watching and wanna follow us along here and comment below and let me know your favorite dahlia of your growing season so I can put it on my list. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. Happy planting, bye.